about punching a time clock and working nine to five. We're talking about working around the clock, rain or shine, hot or cold, because crops and animals won't wait. Jimmy knows all about it because he lives it. And Jimmy knows what you're going through because he goes through it too. He's here to talk about it. It's seed and feed, chemicals and compost, vaccinations and irrigation. It's time for Today in Ag with Jimmy Clark. Hey, good day to all you great stewards of the land. It's Today in Ag with Jimmy Clark. It's another warm day out there. Most of you know you're out there working in it. We have 95 degrees at Slap Out, 94 at the May Ranch. We have 97 at Breckenridge. La Homa's 96. Eric is 98. Warm spot right now in the state is Granville at 100 degrees. Out here in the Texas Panhandle, we have 93 at Lipscomb, 94 at Miami, 97 at Wellington, and 100 at Odell. Pretty warm. We are under a heat advisory, and... Uh, not to give people hopes, but I remember when we used to look forward to hurricanes in the Gulf coming up and uh, get us our moisture to plant our fall forage crops. Well, the Gulf is stirring up pretty good down there. Nothing headed our way yet, but it's a good sign uh, that I think there's four storms they're watching right now in the Gulf. One's hitting, uh, already hit Texas way down south. Uh, in there so anyway good signs hopefully and get a little relief to this heat and so all right we've got a pretty good show lined up today i got wayne becker's going to be in here on uh, in our second segment for uh, from nature's fertilizer we're going to be talking about liquid fertilizers and some other stuff be really interesting so stay tuned meanwhile during the show you can always uh text into the uh today in ag text line and ask questions if you have any for him me whatever and anyway so keep that in mind 225-4580-225-9697 is that number today is also stockman's veterinarian clinic happy hour dr mouse said we are seeing a dramatic increase in foot rot cases as a result of all the recent moisture uh in the last uh, two or three months. Early treatment is the key to avoid production loss and to minimize hoof, toe, and joint damage. Let us help as soon as lameness is detected. Also, please remember to keep eye on your pets and livestock as ticks are thriving, and they are. There's all kinds of critters out there this year. Ticks carry diseases for our pets and rob our livestock of production and weight gain. Contact us for easy treatment and prevention programs for all species. It's also time to plan uh, spring calf working. As I know a lot of people have started in the last month working calves, getting ready for uh, wheat pasture this fall, and a vaccination program for your cow herds. So call us and we can work together on a program and schedule that. It will fit your needs and production schedule. <laughs> also providing a full line of equine services, including vaccines and dental. Remember, that good clean water is the most important nutrient for our pets and livestock. Please check your water sources regularly, providing proudly serving all Western Oklahoma and the Texas Panhandle, providing full service to all species and a complete mixed animal practice. Call Dr. Taylor Mouse at 580-225-0200 to schedule a visit or after hours emergency service. All right, let's get going here. Let's see the market, everything, grains, livestock, everything's in the red. Right now, uh, September corn's at 462, December's at 475, March is at 489. Soybeans for September, 1351. November's 1344. January's 1354. Soybean mill for September, 404.90. A short ton, October's 395.40, December's 392.70. Soybean oil for September, 66.29, October 63.91, December 62.24. Hard red winter wheat, September 736, December 743. Oats for September, actually it just popped up, it's in the green now, it's up one, 
at 442 and December's 463. Live cattle for August 178.25, October 178.75, December 183.20, February 187.32. Feeder cattle for August is down about 70 cents at 246.07. September's down about the same at 249.62. Lean hogs, October 79.80, December 72.35, February 76.72. Cotton for October, actually up, not much, but it's up at 84 cents a pound, and December is 83 cents a pound. Okay, let's see uh, what was happening last night in the uh, agricultural world grains were higher overnight but they're down today it's hot and dry weather curb crop conditions little or no rain has fallen in parts of the u.s corn belt in the past week including parts of nebraska iowa and kansas according to the data from the national weather service precipitation page about 58 percent of the corn was in good or excellent condition as of sunday that's down from 59 percent a week earlier according to the usda four percent of the crop was mature at the start of the week 38 percent of spring wheat earned top ratings down from 42 percent uh, according to the usda around 39 percent was harvested and that's up from 24 percent so they're uh, a week earlier so they're on a row winter wheat harvest is wrapping up with 96 percent in the bin Soybeans fared better last week at 59%. We're still in good or excellent condition as of Sunday, unchanged from the week uh, prior. Still, heat indexes are forecast for the rest of the week in much of the U.S. Midwest. Values will reach as high as 120 degrees Fahrenheit in some areas while hovering around 105 to 115 in other uh, growing areas. The Pro Farmer Crop Tour started yesterday, and corn yield in the South Dakota was estimated at 157.4 bushels an acre. That's up from last year's 118.5, and the three-year average in South Dakota was 149.7 bushels. Soybean pods in three by three squares were seen at 1,013. That's up from 871.4 last year but down from the three-year average of 1039.7 in Iowa or not Iowa but actually in Ohio corn yield is projected at 183.9 bushels an acre that's up from the 2022 estimate of 174.2 and a three-year average of 175.6 Soybean pods in the 3x3 area were reported at 1,259.52.9 versus last year's uh, count of 1,131. So pretty good. So there you have it. Weather in our farm belt. Hot weather will continue today from Wisconsin through southeastern Texas and from northeastern Colorado into Ohio. Basically, the whole Midwest is under this dome. Heat indexes in central and eastern Nebraska are forecast at 105 to 110 this afternoon. Wisconsin and northern Illinois values could reach 115. I don't know if you guys seen this on the Oklahoma Mezzanet yesterday. Two records were broken yesterday. Uh, the same record. One was in uh, Miami at 126.14, uh, I believe, and then just a little bit. Uh, later, a couple hours later, in Jay, Oklahoma, which is not very far from Miami, uh, was at 126.74 heat index. <sighs> Man, that's hot. Anyway, uh, anybody want to go to the Elk City Rodeo? And I'm even going to give you your choice. A pair of tickets, two tickets for either Friday night or Sunday night. Before we go to break, here's the question. And I'm going to take the third person to message in on the Today in Ag text line. Who is your favorite radio host in western Oklahoma? Say their name and text in your name too so I know who won. And you might get you a free set of tickets. Third person. Third person to text that in and I'll get you a, uh, your choice. Let me know whether you want to go Friday or Sunday night. So anyway, to the big Elk City Rodeo champions. One of the most famous rodeos in western Oklahoma. So anyway. We're going to take a break. When I come back, I'm going to have Mr. Wayne Becker on the show with me.
Be right back after this. The Day in Ag with Jimmy Clark. Right now, hay coverage is a is a big deal. You know, price of hay right now is very expensive. The ability to get hay right now, and when people get their hands on it, it's probably one of the most expensive assets that they have in their operation right now. And we, we can insure that hay for fire. I know there's been a lot of wildfires, and people have a concern for that. And then if you're an existing customer with us and you have a farm and ranch policy, you know, people need to understand that's not something that's automatically included. They would need to call and let our office know, you know, what coverage they need for their hay and we can add that onto their farm and ranch policy even if you don't have business with us currently we can write hay insurance hi i'm mickey lively i'm an insurance agent with oklahoma farm bureau my office is located in greer county call me anytime at 580-782-3827 Life insurance and annuity products offered through Farm Bureau Life Insurance Company. Property and casualty products are offered through Oklahoma Farm Bureau Mutual Insurance and affiliated companies. You worked and you sweat and you worried for months over your crop. So why are you giving away part of the profit to someone else? Cut out the middleman. Keep your grain on your farm. Keep your money for yourself. A grain bin on your farm will never depreciate as long as you use it. And it'll make you as much money as you want it to make. Store your own grain in your own bin. Wall Bin Hoppers. Take a look at their website, wallequip.com. Wallequip.com. You did all the work. You should keep all the profit. SEI Agritech in Elk City is now an Oklahoma authorized distributor for Avanta Seeds, offering Avanta Seed and Corn, Ford Sorghum, and Milo. Advanta Seeds is focused on sustainable agriculture and providing farmers with quality seed. Advanta is now offering 0% financing through December 2023. So stop by SEI Agritech on South Randall or give Kent a call at 580-225-0317 for more details on Avanta Seeds. The future begins with a seed. It's important to keep your irrigation machines up and running during the growing season because when your crops need water, they can't wait. And when you need parts, there's no substitute for the best. Valley Genuine Parts, from gaskets and gearboxes to booster pumps and boom mats. Valley Genuine Parts make all the difference to your operation. Contact your local Valley dealer, Knutson Irrigation, 1-800-373-9325. For all your irrigation parts, technology, and service needs. Or online at KnutsonIrrigation.com. You've heard us talking about the 30-year-old ratchet that Napa replaced, no questions asked. A customer had a question about that particular transaction and that particular policy of replacing tools regardless of age. He walked into the Elk City Napa store and asked, do you guys really do that? And the answer was, we replaced two last week. We try our best not to tell the customer no, but to find what they need. Napa Auto Parts of Elk City, 716 West 3rd. More parts for more cars. We've been part of Western Oklahoma's ag industry since statehood. I'm Marty Maddox from Great Plains Bank in Elk City. We proudly support our local FFA labor auctions and premium sales. Our local lenders have a combined 127 years of banking experience. We handle all ag-related loans, like land purchases, farm operating loans, and stocker lines of credit. And we recently helped over 700 area farmers and ranchers with their PPP loans. Great Plains Bank in Elk City is here to lend agriculture a helping hand. Member FDIC. He loves to talk about farming and ranching. Here's more of Today in Ag with Jimmy Clark. All right, welcome back to the Stockman's Vet Clinic Hour. Uh, Pretty funny people out here on the text line. I knew knew that was stirred up, and I'm going to tell you, Sean Wilson is not the most favorite ag guy in western oklahoma he's from missouri he's a dairy farmer he has no authority out here in western oklahoma anyway let's see here let's do a before i get uh, wayne on here let's do see what's happening out in north texas let's go with odell right now it's 100 degrees heat index is 106 humidity is 35 dew point 67 the winds out of east at 11 miles an hour uh, so far, month-to-date precipitation for the first 22 days of August, three-tenths of an inch is all they've got, 0. 0.30. Eight-inch soil temperature now, I looked last week, it was 81. Today, it is 93 degrees at eight inches, so it is hot on there. Okay, Mr. Wayne Becker, are you on there with me, sir? I am. Oh, Good hey, afternoon. 
Yes, good afternoon. Welcome to, to the Today in Ag show. And you're with Nature's Fertilizer. Uh, tell us a little bit of history about that. Okay, well, Nature's Fertilizer is the oldest specialty fertilizer company in the United States. Uh, we uh, started back in Ohio, I guess, Marion, Ohio, back in 1946. Uh, they they discovered how to make a high quality uh, phosphorus potassium fertilizer that would uh, store real well, uh, not cause problems uh, with uh, with your equipment, and uh, more efficiently get fertilizers into plants. So that's we got our start back in '46 doing that. Well, they uh, you get and let's just let everybody know that when we say nature's uh, fertilizer, it's not it's not pronounced how you think it is it's n-a-c-h-u-r-s right yes sir that's yeah how you would spell it. Yeah. yeah so if you want to they've got an awesome website matter of fact i have the website pulled up and there's some really awesome uh testaments on there from people that have used them uh, from wisconsin all the way down to uh i'm just going to say tech i wanted to say south texas but it's it's just down into the big state and so it, it looks good so uh, one of the questions, actually, I have a question on the on a text line already. If you don't mind uh, me reading this, this gentleman wants to know if there's any liquid fertilizer options to raise soil pH ahead of planting alfalfa. Can you answer that for me? The uh, that's pretty tough. <laughs> yeah, uh, it is. <laughs> yeah, you know, as far as liquid fertilizer options something like that uh the uh if you're going to try to raise your soil ph lime is is the best thing to to get everything in order and trying to get your ph into a neutral state certainly helps with nutrient availability so uh i have to say i don't know of any good liquid options that would raise that your ph across the broad spectrum Uh, now using a starter fertilizer for almost any crop is a band-aid to help uh, help overcome low pH problems because it will uh, provide the nutrients in a zone right there by the seed and that plant can get started and access those nutrients and not have to worry about the, the problems that come with a low soil pH and, and getting going but but no okay. changing the soil pH I don't know of any yeah it's uh, it's what I you know there's uh, two options when you're low in pH it's lime when you're high in pH it's chip I mean it's just one or the other and I'm sure there's other ways to uh, get down uh, your high pH down uh, especially if you got irrigation or whatever but uh, one of the questions I wanted to talk to you about was could you explain the difference between uh, polyphosphate and orthophosphate and how one is a better product for seedling and young plants you know as far we i you know this fall you know we're not very far away from planting rye wheat or true to cow this fall so uh could you explain the difference and what which one would be a better product sure i'd be glad to and and of course that's a relevant question because that's really one of the ways i mean that's where nature's really shines obviously is is a plant starter or in furrow starter for uh for your crops as they're emerging out of the ground, and one of the and the product that they came up with was was an orthophosphate product. So, not to be too complicated because because um, you know phosphorus is phosphorus, and and a plant needs to take the the phosphorus up. And, and whenever we're applying a, a phosphorus fertilizer, a lot of times we may not have any idea whether it's an orthophosphate or a polyphosphate. Uh, but but it really matters, especially if you're going to plant to put a fertilizer right with the seed. Okay. And the reason is the polyphosphate and the orthophosphate are very similar. They c- c- contain phosphorus, but a plant only takes up orthophosphate. It does not take up polyphosphate. So to explain that, an orthophosphate is just one phosphorus molecule at a time. It is a, and a polyphosphate is a string of phosphorus molecules that are put together. So one way to to uh, to 
think about it is if you think of a, a chain, you know, a chain that maybe you're hooking your tractor to your pickup and pulling it out of the ditch with. Um, you have all these different chain links, and each single chain link would be like an orthophosphate, and a polyphosphate would be all of those chain links put together, so the entire chain. And as you can imagine, moving that entire chain into a plant at one time just can't happen. It's too big. It doesn't. It just just won't won't occur. So the plant will only take it in one phosphorus at a time. And to change that big long chain into that single phosphorus molecule, you have to have warm temperature and moisture and time. And you put those three things together to to get the polyphosphate, the chain of phosphorus is broken down to a single orthophosphate so that the plant can can move it in with its roots. And when it, of course whenever you're planting a a crop uh, and you're putting fertilizer right with the seed, uh, one of the things that we're concerned with is trying to get the phosphorus into the plant quickly because the quicker you can get it into the into the growing crop, the sooner that crop will get the roots going, um, be healthy, be able to photosynthesize and, and get itself going. So a lot of, of what stimulates a plant is the source, the right source of phosphorus being there available as it's taken off and gets starting its its life, and uh, that's why orthophosphate is uh, is important. And that kind of is a little bit of a difference between the ortho and the polyphosphate. I got you, and so, and and P and K versus N. I've always been told all my life, and maybe you can help me out and, and maybe correct me or uh, whatever. But P and K is so much more important. Like, we're getting ready to plant our uh, winter forge here coming up, you know, in the next month or probably knowing some of these guys around here, the first rain we get. Uh, so we're going to plant our wheat or rye or true to cattle. And, uh, but P and K is so much more important right at the moment with the seedling and the early plant versus the end. Is that right, true, is that just, or is that just an old myth? Uh more important than the nitrogen is that what you said yes more important as is a seed or a seedling or as if it's just a young plant still coming up the because the root system is way more important than getting foliage up above the ground when it comes to wheat especially i think you may find that um you know they're all three important and i'm not taking anything away from nitrogen but uh as the plant gets going uh, you know it just needs a portion of the amount of nutrients it's going to need over the whole year and um, let's look at wheat in particular. Okay. Uh, there's a little nitrogen that's going to go into any in furrow starter any way that you do it because a lot of times your nitrogen and phosphorus come together in, in the fertilizer that you buy. And having a little nitrogen is important because we want to get the, I mean, it's for growth and, and it's important to have a little bit. But having too much is actually kind of detrimental. Um, matter of fact, Oklahoma State, has done a lot of research on on wheat and your nitrogen applications, and they really for grain production. Now, there's a difference between grain and, and grazing, but for grain production, they in particular think that you should keep the nitrogen to a bare, bare minimal until it becomes January, February, March top dress time. But the phosphorus and the potassium, they lead the plant to greater hardiness, greater stress resistance help it uh, stool out, make roots, um, and increase winter hardiness. So phosphorus and potassium in particular on that wheat plant, uh, as we get going, certainly are, are uh, very, very critical um, as a starter. Well, you know, Oklahoma, especially western Oklahoma, we have a pretty good variety of different soil types out here, sand, uh, clay sand, sandy clay, uh, red rocks, <laughs> and uh, I've seen plenty of that. And uh, this uh, starter fertilizer that uh, you guys have is that. Uh, how important are soil tests? How's that? How important are soil tests? Well, 
I like soil tests, and I like people that do soil tests because, obviously, they're a good soil test is going to tell you more than just how much nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, and micronutrients. You should always do micronutrients. Oh, your, yes, by all soil means. Test. It, it'll also tell you your pH, and it will also tell you uh, uh, the balance of nutrients because having things balanced is very important. But honestly, every crop, every time, can benefit from an in starter. So having a soil test is good in your overall plan and in understanding the roadmap of where you need to go. But when it comes to just getting your plant started, getting it started as healthy as you possibly can, and uh, taking away some of the stress and and the risk um, of plant health in that early season, applying a little bit of starter fertilizer is going to provide the plant with nutrients that it is not going to be able to get into its growing seedling stage uh, until the root system develops and can mine the soil. So even if you have just loads of nutrients in your soil, there's a time in every seedling's life that it could benefit from more nutrients than what its roots can take in. So having a good balance with a little nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium starter in the root zone is going to benefit every crop every time, regardless of your soil test. Okay. On it, honestly, I do believe, kind of going back to your question, I do believe soil tests are very important because they, they tell you a lot of other things, and, and one of the most important things is soil pH and, and managing for, for uh, problems that get associated with a high pH or managing for problems that are associated with low pH or, you know, so it, it, it would definitely change some of my recommendations for the overall program just based on that and organic matter and, and everything else. But, but it, again, that, that's not, most soils can, can benefit from a, a basic starter. Uh, we might vary the rate uh, based on soil nutrient content. Uh, we might add micronutrients based on soil mu- nutrient content um, and, and a lot of other things that, that, that get to be personal conversations between a farmer's goals and, and, and what we can do. And that's one nice thing about our company is, is we, we make a wide array of the micronutrients and other things to help, help you out as well. Okay, well, let's take a break real quick, and I'm talking with Mr. Wayne Becker of Nature Fertilizer. And when we come back, we're going to carry on about talking about starter fertilizers uh, uh, the, or for the starter fertilizer that they have uh, versus some, uh, you know, some broadcast application uh, and stuff like that. And like I said, the, the, the Today in Ag text line is wide open if you got any questions for Wayne at 580-225-9697. And, Wayne, if you got a minute, we'll get right back to you right after this break. Looking forward to it. Thank All right, you. Cool. Thank you. All right. Well, I'm going to announce I, I had so much participation in this deal. I'm going to give away two sets of tickets. So, anyway, I'm going to uh, give away a set to let me Jeremy Lloyd. Uh, I'm going to give you a set for uh, Friday night, if that's all right. And then also, I got to go back. Uh, oh, Edward Cobb got you for a set for Sunday night. So I'll have your names on these and up front. And yeah, I know Sean Wilson, he's, he's not your guy. <laughs> and so, anyway, we'll be right back after this. A Day in Ag with Jimmy Clark. Cattle have to eat. When grass runs short and you want to strengthen your herd, go with High Pro. For High Pro, go to Cowman's. Cowman's Feed and Ranch Supply near Eric specializes in bulk feed. It's always in stock and prices are good. And the way they take care of you is even better. If Gary Mills says he'll do it, it gets done every time. It's nice to know a place like Cowman's is around to help ag producers here at home. 
Cowman's Feed and Ranch Supply, 117 West 2nd in Erick. Call 526-3070. When your tractor has a flat, you're stuck. When your truck's on a construction site and a tire goes down, you're in trouble. You need help. So you call down to Blair, and they come to you. They answer the phone, and somebody comes to wherever you are to fix your problem. They carry Firestone, Michelin, and some other tires. Blair Tire and Feed, Highway 283 and 19. On-site tire service, 563-2692. 563-2692. They come to you. The National Weather Service has issued a heat alert for the deals at Barber Dyson Ford. Summer may be winding down, but there's no sign of scorching deals letting up anytime soon in Ford country. Vehicles are coming in daily, and we're stocked up. Cash in with Ford's low APR on almost every vehicle line, plus get customer cash. Now's the time to buy. Do it where customers are treated like royalty. Barber Dyson Ford in the northeast part of Elk City, online at barberdysonford.net. The Elk City Rodeo is more than just a rodeo. It's getting together with family and friends, standing up for the American flag and for what's right. Pride in who we are. This is Wayne Brooks inviting you to the 85th anniversary of the Elk City Rodeo, September 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. Brought to you by Doug Gray Dodge and Ram. Tickets are on sale online at elkcityrodeo.com and at Circle A Western Wear. The Elk City Rodeo, September 1st through the 3rd. The Great Elk City Rodeo. See you there. Night drivers sure are valuable, and Canyon is offering you a new pay rate. Canyon Oilfield Services is hiring night drivers with Class A CDLs at their Hinton and Chickasha locations. Health, dental, vision, and life insurance, a retirement plan, vacation, and a longevity bonus. Now they're offering a new pay rate, and it's excellent. Night drivers, call 580-729-3297. 580-729-3297. We're the company where employees decide to stay. At Canyon Oilfield Services, the key word is service. Mosey on down to Hobart Stockyard's weekly cattle sale. It's located on Highway 183 North in Hobart, Oklahoma. The sale is every Wednesday at 9.30. If you need to consign, call Rex Fleming at 580-331-8547. They receive cattle all day Mondays and Tuesdays. Buyers can bid in person or online. Hobart Stockyards, where we want your business and do appreciate it. Hey, Today in Ag listeners, this is Jared Clark with South Star JCB. We carry a variety of wheel loaders, excavators, telehandlers, skid steers, and several other types of equipment. Please give me a call at 469-325-7466. That's 469-325-7466. Check us out on the web, southstartxjcb.com. That's southstartxjcb.com. I'd love to sell you one. Thank you and God bless you. Now, back to more of Today in Ag with Jimmy Clark. All right, welcome back to the Stockman's Vet Hour. I picked Camargo for your northwestern Oklahoma forecast, the Long Rangers. Currently at Camargo is 98, feels like 101. Dew point 66, humidity is 35. Uh, sunset tonight at 820, uh, pretty easy forecast. Today 100, tomorrow 98. Thursday 100, Friday 101, Saturday 97. And pretty easy. Well, on the phone with me right now is Mr. Wayne Becker with Nature's Fertilizer. And Wayne, welcome back to the show and thank you so much for being on today. Good to be here. Very yeah. good to be here. All right. Well, let's talk about the benefit of your starter fertilizer, which, by the way, is low salt versus just a broadcast application of 4600. Yes, yes. So, uh, basically, uh, whenever we, uh, traditional fertility would be a broadcast fertilizer of, of some nature. And uh, let's, like the 18460. Uh, so, whenever you take a product like that and you broadcast it across the ground, you have a prill of fertilizer that lands here and another one that lands there. And there's a, quite a bit of space in between. That, that does not make contact with the uh, with the fertilizer. So, first of all, there's a little bit of a complication there, where if we take that same rate of fertilizer that we broadcast and we narrow it down into a band of fertilizer, we can place that band 
right next to the root of a crop so that the plant can pick up more of it much e more easily. So that's the first efficiency that comes from applying a liquid fertilizer instead of a broadcast. But the next efficiency that comes from it is whenever you spread it out in that broadcast, each prill has a lot of soil contact. So all those phosphorus fertilizers and other nutrients that get applied in a broadcast way have a, the potential to react to uh, things that are in the soil. So when they react, they become insoluble and unavailable to the plants. Uh, just let's take phosphorus. It has a negative charge, and just like a magnet, that negative charge is looking for a positive charge to, to bind with. And in low pH soils, we have a very positive charge with aluminum and iron that's quite prevalent and they'll make that phosphorus unavailable. And whenever you have a high pH soil, you have calcium, maybe magnesium, that have these positive charges that react and make the phosphorus unavailable. So once again, if you take a band and you place it near the root zone, you've overloaded the soil and you don't have as many of those negative reactions either. So we're being much more efficient and less wasteful with what we're doing. So we're able to do much more good with less fertilizer. And then uh, when you take into account things such as the low salt fertilizer, all fertilizers are salt. They uh, too much can, can have some negative, negative effects, but most of the fertilizer that we're used to dealing with um, causes corrosion, it causes uh, uh, all sorts of problems, and that's what nature's figured out how to do in 1946, is make a non-corrosive, very low salt fertilizer that won't burn the roots of a plant. So now that we now we can place it in closer proximity to the roots and not have as much possibility of causing injury to the plant because of that concentration, and then we get that benefit from banding it over the uh, broadcast application. And uh, that's, that's some of the main benefits that we get. So we get a lot more efficiency uh, out of the type of fertilizers that we're talking about. And, and honestly, uh, you get it for a good, fair price that's uh, very affordable when you start looking at the benefits versus the, uh, the pricing. It's a, it's a, it's a big win. And, and then the plant health and everything else um, so well these for the yep. the starter fertilizer that you guys got it's not only just for wheat or crudical or rye it's good for everything if I'm reading your website right yes sir the uh, we have a quite a variety of starter fertilizers um, that that work for different things they're Obviously, different crops have different um, sensitivities to salt, uh, and that's one of the main things that we look at. We have some some of our starter fertilizers are even lower salt than others, and and very salt sensitive crops such as cotton or soybeans. Uh, alfalfa. We have alfalfa. We have certain certain products that. Uh, are, are extremely low salt, and we have certain rates that we we want to apply as well, so as not to increase the salt load too much. But so we have products that are specifically approved for those, and then we have a wider array of products for those less salt sensitive ones, especially such as wheat, um, corn, kind of fits into that. Uh, but we also have rates that we would like you to follow as well. But but ultimately, we're trying to influence. You know, not only provides the nutrients the plant needs, but we also want to, ultimately, we want to create a better root environment all the way around. And that includes a balance of nutrients with not just nitrogen and phosphorus, but potassium as well, which is extremely important. 
um, in getting a young plant going. Most seedlings take in more potassium than they do phosphorus, and, and we're, we're kind of preconditioned to believe it's all about the phosphorus because phosphorus helps the wheat plant stool out and it helps the corn plant decide how many rows around it's going to make its ear right away. But the potassium is actually very important in that vegetative growth of those plants and in the root strength as well. So potassium is extremely important and applying those together uh, helps a lot. So, um, yeah, yeah, I found out the hard way salt's not cool with cotton or uh, legumes. So, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no. it's not it's not cool at all. It's been a it's been a learning curve for me. You know, I start uh, I actually when that happened down there when the water tables come back up after the drought of 2011 and that salt. Uh, came up with it and basically killed the alfalfa crop and then uh, didn't know what it was what happened but and then planted cotton and that wasn't a good deal that's when we started digging a little deep deeper into soil health and fertilizers and stuff like that and we we're turning it around now so it yeah it's uh it the, the guessing game's gone. It's too expensive nowadays. It doesn't matter whether it's the seed, the fertilizer, or whatever. It's too expensive to play the guessing game now. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It well, well, let's take a quick break, if you don't mind. And when we come back, I'll have your Hobart Farm and Garden Long Ranger forecast. And we're going to find out how the uh, nature's fertilizer comes, packaging and where to get it and finish up because I think you want to talk a little bit about carbon too if I remember right. I would like to do that just a minute. If there's yes, time. we got time. So let's take a quick break and when we come back uh, we'll talk, take that up and then we'll talk about how to get the product and uh, what packages it comes in. How about that? Sounds great. Thank you, sir. Hang on right quick. Today in Ag with Jimmy Clark. Hey, cotton farmers, are you walking in high cotton? high cotton? It's easier than you think. Have your cotton gin fast and efficiently at Western Planters Cotton Gin in Hobart, Oklahoma. Bet you didn't know they have the largest gin in the state and the connections to get top dollar on your investment. They're located at the corner of Highway 9 and Highway 183, just north of Hobart. Be sure and check them out online. WesternPlantersCottonGin.com we are open on Saturdays from 9 to noon, full service lobby. We have new accounts there, personal bankers. We have loan guys there. We have tellers. You can do anything you need to do on a Saturday in the lobby. It helps a lot of people who are out of town that need to come do banking business or people that work Monday through Friday and can't get in with our hours. They can come on a Saturday. That's one of the things that makes us different. I'm Elizabeth Mosley, and I help make the difference at first. Basement being washed away? Weather can cause conventional mineral to absorb water and blow away. Simply put, your cows probably aren't eating it. That's why Purina created Wind and Rain Storm Mineral, a weatherized mineral that can stand up to the elements. Its larger particle size makes it harder to blow away and easier for water to pass through it. Keep money in your pocket. Contact Farmers Union Co-op of Elk City today. <laughs> Do you love the great outdoors? Maybe you enjoy trap shooting or skeet shooting, or maybe getting some target practice in at the firing range is your thing. If you're that person, you love guns. Hobart Farm and Garden has a whole room dedicated to guns, gun safes, ammunition, and more. It's quite impressive. You gotta go check it out. They are Western Oklahoma's platinum browning dealer and Glock stocking dealer. They're located at 1030 South Monroe in Hobart, Oklahoma. If they don't have it, you don't need it. Hobart Farm and Garden and ranchers, listen up. It's time to make your life easier with the hay wagon from Everett's Welding and Repair in Visay, Oklahoma. The Apache hay wagon hauls multiple bales of hay and helps reduce waste. Less waste means more money in your pocket. It'll pay for itself over time, plus make your life easier. What a deal. 
See all they have to offer at EverettsWelding.com. Again, that's EverettsWelding.com. And be sure to check out their ads inside the Penny News. Good afternoon, no great stewards of the land. This is your Western Oklahoma Livestock Auction Market Report for Monday, August 21st. 948 head were sold. Four head of steers at 461 brought 285. 21 at 562 brought 294. Six at 639 brought 252. 17 at 768 brought 250. 16 at 785 brought 246. Drew, will you finish this out? Ain't a problem at all. Jimmy Clark, here we go. Eight at 836 brought 235. 84. 82 at 851 brought 238. 5 head of heifers at 492 brought 246. 13 at 510 brought 255. 26 at 540 brought 240. 30 at 659 brought 254. 14 at 886 brought 203. 10 at 934 brought 203. 16 at 974 brought 193. Butcher cows were 71 to 120. Butcher bulls brought 95 to 130. Western Oklahoma Livestock Auction X is 71. Clinton, Oklahoma. Sale every Monday at 10 a.m. to consign. Call Brandon Hickey. 580 497 6095. Way to go, Jimmy. We killed it. Uh, no. Jimmy's all wound up and ready to go. Here comes more of Today in Ag with Jimmy Clark. <laughs> Drew, Drew Cobb, you're a funny guy. You do really good. I, I have picked Hollis, Oklahoma for your Hobart Farm and Garden Long Ranger forecast. 99 degrees there currently right now with 104 heat index and we are under they hollis the whole western oklahoma, whole state oklahoma is under a heat advisory how about that 2.66 humidity 35 winds are out of the east southeast at 12 miles an hour 104 today 103 tomorrow thursday 104 friday 105 saturday 103 and there it is pretty simple forecast doesn't mean i like it but it's pretty simple. Are you are you got any of that heat going on where you at, Mr. Uh, where you're at, Mr. Becker? <laughs> Absolutely, it is being hot. Oh uh, yeah, it's uh, it's uh, my my late season corn just started tasseling yesterday. This is gonna be good, so we'll see what happens. Oh boy. Yeah. yeah. Oh boy. So, uh, yesterday you and I were talking a little bit, and you wanted to talk a little bit about carbon. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So if you're in the ag, ag you, you couldn't avoid conversations about carbon here recently. Everything from carbon sequestration to, uh, to carbon helping your soil health and uh, various things like that. So, so the fact of the matter is, is carbon is a very important um, element. And it's a, it's a really useful tool when it comes to helping plants take up nutrients as well. So I wanted to spend just a little time talking about carbon because about 10 years ago, nature started offering a carbon-based potassium. So people are used to potassium chloride, that's a dry OO60. Um, and the potassium comes with something else. Most nutrients come with something else. They're, they're reacted to uh, to a different molecule. So your dry potassium is generally reacted to a chloride, which is a very salty product. Well, nature's offered a new product that we call BioK um, around 10 years ago is when they came out with it. And what it is, is it's a carbon molecule that's reacted to a potassium. And it's a liquid product. Uh, and that does all sorts of neat things for the plant and for the soil that, uh, that are very important. So probably the most widely used carbon source in liquid fertilizer is a humic acid. And humic acid is this big, huge molecule. It has a lot of carbons in it, like 150 different carbons in the in the molecule and what it does it's black and it's kind of nasty to handle um, some are cleaner than others but they're kind of nasty but they they provide your nutrients a place to to kind of nest in and not react uh, so if you have a liquid nitrogen and you put humic with it it'll help keep it from volatilizing and it'll also help keep it from leaching because of all the carbons provide a, a uh, complexing 
for the nitrogen. When you put it with liquid phosphorus, the phosphorus can find this place to complex or nest in and not react with your high pH or your low pH soil, and it helps it. So that's one carbon that a lot of uh, different companies offer, and Nature's absolutely has a, has a humic acid that helps, but, and we can add that to things or, or sell it separate, but we have a potassium that's reacted to the carbon, and this is a small carbon molecule. There's lots of carbon with this potassium, but it's, there's only two carbons in the molecule. And what that does is it's an active carbon instead of a carbon that just helps complex things. It being active means that it's a fuel source for the microbes in the soil. So plant microbes or soil microbes, such as your beneficial fungi and your beneficial bacteria, actually feed off of carbon that plants pull out of the air whenever they photosynthesize. So just real simply, we have carbon dioxide in the air. The plant uses sunlight to pull the carbon dioxide out of the air and, and restructure that into sugars so that the plant then uses them for structures to grow the plant. But about 30% of that carbon dioxide it pulls out of the air, air it restructures it into a very similar molecule. A matter, matter of fact, some of the molecules stuff that it manufactures is the exact same molecule as what's in our bio -K, and it leaks that back down into the soil. We call it a root exudate, and that is what creates soil health because it fuels the microbes in the soil that are right there in the root zone, and it also helps with nutrient exchange just between the plant and the root. So that little carbon molecule is a big benefit to soil health. And the, like I said, I told you about humic acid, and then I talked about the bio K with the carbon that's in it. There's all, you know, carbons are as different as a diamond is a carbon and a lump of coal is carbon. So, carbon. so they're very, very different. The same with these that agriculture is using. So the bio K product, the little bitty carbon molecule that we're using in that bio K product, actually, if you turn around and foliar feed, the uh, potassium source, you get potassium in the plant in a foliar way, but you also get the carbon that goes into the plant on a foliar way. And it, again, is the same carbon that a plant will make on its, for itself on a cellular level. So it saves the plant energy when it soaks it into itself, and it uh, helps with a lot of stress pathways. So then the fact that it comes with potassium, which is very important for plant growth, uh, very important for drought stress, uh, and whenever you pair the two, it takes all the salt properties, of, most of the salt properties away, and it makes the potassium more available to oh, the plant, yep. more soluble. So Nature's really started this BioK uh, product line about 10 years ago, and it's, it really adds very, very little to the expense of anything. But it, it adds so much more in plant health and soil health whenever you utilize it. So that, that's um, uh, kind of uh, the basics between uh, uh, of what Nature's is working with in the carbon area. And, and as I was saying, in general, agriculture is understanding the benefits of carbon um, in the, both in the soil and to, uh, to help with uh, fertilizer uptake in a whole lot of different ways. And um, we, we especially are proud of our, our premium line of fertilizers, which, which includes some infro starters that will have Bio-K in them or foliars that have Bio-K in them or, or we'll even sell it as straight um, Bio-K, which we have a, an OO24 analysis that uh, you can put in the ground for, on cotton as a seed starter with the seed. That's how safe it is or turn around and foliar it um, on, on any crop. So very, very, very uh, versatile uh, uh, fertilizer and uh, very beneficial in a lot of ways. Well, you're right about the bio K. It's, it's pretty black. <laughs> and so I've used no, it. No, 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 no. It's not bio K. It's, it's clear. Yeah, no, the, I'm sorry, I, the bio, but the carbon in uh, the, the humic. Humic. The humic is black. Yes, yes. the humic. 
Well, do you yeah. got any? Uh, who's our local dealers around there? Our listening area. Okay. All right. Yes. Well, right there in Elk City, we have SEI and Mr. Kent Watkins. He he handles our product uh, right there, and of course we have some. We have quite a few dealers around, and, and various ways to get it. Uh, over by El Reno and and down in Chickasha, we have dealers and and uh, places like that. But but up in, I know that you have listeners probably all the way up to Southwest Kansas, and and it'd be tough for me to to name everybody that we have all around there. But well, the website's sure the easiest way. That website's the easiest way, and you can always give me a call or give Kent a call if you know him or. There's other, we have uh, district sales managers that, that uh, two or three of them that are within your listening area as well. Okay. That, that will help steer you well, in the right direction. Well, so they're about to cut us, they're, they're going to cut us off, and, and I'll figure it up some more tomorrow. We're like the software. All right. Well, thank you. Helping you get Thanks the job done. Yep. 96.5 KECO, Elk City. Tragedy on the first day of school. Lisa Brady, Fox News. A school bus involved in a deadly crash in Ohio, west of Columbus. The Ohio State Patrol says a school bus with 52 children aboard had tried to avoid an oncoming SUV that crossed the center line on State Route 41 in Lawrenceville. After contact, the school bus traveled off the right side of the roadway and overturned. Trooper Tyler Ross says 23 students were injured, one seriously. There was one student that succumbed to fatal injuries at the scene of the crash. They were ejected from the school bus. The cause of the crash is under investigation. Fox's Jeff Panasso, the Northwestern Local Schools District, which started classes today, set up a parent reunification center. Just getting reports, all children and adults have been rescued from a cable car in Pakistan, where they were crossing a canyon to get to school, when one of the cables snapped, leaving the car suspended more than a thousand feet above ground. Army commandos dangling from helicopters for that rescue mission. Former President Trump says he'll turn himself in Thursday to be booked in Georgia's election interference case against him and 18 others. Former Trump attorney John Eastman surrendered today, calling the indictment bogus. His attorney, David Wolf, says their defense will be the law. And the rightful opportunities that we had to challenge the numbers and to determine whether or not there were more miscast votes than the margin of victory. It didn't matter if they were Republican or Democrat. He denies any illegal effort to challenge the 2020 results. Trump has called the case his fourth indictment, part of an ongoing witch hunt. Eight of the other Republicans running for president are prepping for tomorrow night's first GOP debate on Fox. Everyone's preparing a little bit differently. Vivek Ramaswamy out there playing tennis. Other people are spending hours on those preparations. Only two of the candidates will be up there have done this before. That's former Vice President Mike Pence and former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie. Fox is Alexis McAdams in Milwaukee. America's listening to Fox News. Hey, it's Jesse Kelly. When a restaurant closes, my reaction is, that sucks. They had good steak. When regional banks close or three of them close overnight, it freaks me out. This is why I have my own personal gold reserve. It's part of my personal protection plan. Call my friends at Oxford Gold Group. Call 833-404-GOLD. 833 833- 404 gold that's 833-404 g-o-l-d reggie was a nurse for 16 years i had become very burnt out i wasn't making good money then it happened there was an ad for my computer career and it just spoke to me my computer career was the best decision he ever made i could study anywhere from my laptop and i was working in the first couple weeks of me being in class reggie hit a home run the field is teeming with jobs become an it pro in just months with zero experience at mycomputercareer.edu the school is amazing it's not rocket science it's mycomputercareer.edu this is one student's experience individual results vary Exide T Auctions will be selling good farm equipment auctions Saturday, September the 2nd for Dr. Charles Carter, nine and a half miles north of Hollis, or just 25 minutes from Wellington, Texas. Trucks, tractors, trailers, farm equipment, Cushman Scooter, 59 El Camino, and much more. Check all the details out at XITauctions.com or call me, Aubrey Latham, 580-393-4440. Saturday, September the 2nd, XIT Auctions, ready to work for you. Alert, 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 alert. Yes, we now interrupt these commercials with an important music announcement. For non-stop country, starts now. 96.5 KECO.